there's like these amazing pictures of your studio, so maybe that's a good point to start, you know, like with like all these references that kind of, you know, like appear over and over and over again in your, like in the different uh, interviews that I had a chance to to read, like I was, as I was preparing for this talk. Yeah. So maybe I was trying again to avoid like the obvious question, but can we probably back up to, um, yeah, just like yeah. the beginning and, and yeah, well, uh, the, the, um, the evolution is um, the book. When I was a young artist, I, I remember going to the Guggenheim Museum, and there was a Mondrian uh, show, and I loved the way it was step by step. You saw every painful step, step by step by step, and I just really that's something that stuck with me. And you know, I think as a painter. Uh, for me, it was like fine, it's like putting together a good recipe. You know, how much of this, how much of this, how much of that. And so Mondrian, uh, Mondrian in terms of, I mean, I do obviously like, you know, Broadway, Broadway, Broadway Woogie, that's a great painting. But the evolution of his work, how it goes from painting those trees, buildings, and, and you see how everything happens. So I thought, that's something I'm going to keep, you know what I mean? That was a big part, that was a real big thing right there. I'm going to keep that. Um, then there are other artists, you know, sort of like um, a, a favorite painter I saw early on when I was maybe 18 years old was Edward Monk, you know what I mean? And I remember I was, it was, I was art school in uh, Columbus, Ohio. That's how much I didn't know about art, because I came from Philadelphia and I went to Columbus, Ohio um, to go to art school. And, uh, but I saw Edward Monk book and I, there was a show at the Guggenheim, so again, the Guggenheim. So I drove to New York and went to see that show. And that artist, uh, just how emotional and how painterly and how direct, uh, you know, what the paint was, that stuck with me. So there you have, there I am, I have uh, Mondrian and I have uh, Edward Monk, you know what I mean? And those, even though I saw those paint, painters when I was 18, uh, they are still key painters for me. So that's all those kinds of things. So I'm trying to think about how do I, all the different things I like, whether it's them or whether it's Monet or Manet or Cezanne or, you know, de Kooning, whatever, how do I take this stuff and, you know, use it, use it in my kitchen, let's say, in my studio. So to give a little bit of a background for those uh, people who probably don't know what your uh, like formation was, you studied at Yale with Philip Guston. Ah uh, no, I, I said I studied. I went to school in Columbus, Ohio, uh, Kansas City, but those were the, the Vietnam War years, and I was escaping that, and I was also escaping. You know, Philadelphia was a really rough, tough city in those days. You know, very racist, and uh, I knew where to get out of town. Uh, so I didn't know what I was doing really. Because I mean, I went to Columbus, Ohio, and that wasn't very good either. Um, so, but then I went to Kansas City because they gave me money, and I ended up going to school there. And then I came back to New York, and then I ended up going to Yale, you know, uh, for graduate school. Um, and that was 1968 that you went to New York. Uh, 68 I went to New York. Yeah, it was a good time. 68 was really a good time in New York. It was still sort of a bohemian art scene, and. Uh, it was really kind of poor. Downtown was empty, and it was really kind of, uh, you know, you know, there were a lot of art bars, so you can hang around a lot of artists, and it was really a, a nice scene. Uh, that was a good time. And there's been like a lot of writing, and you know, like lots of uh, like questioning, you know, like again, I was reading like all these interviews about your time in New York, like late 60s, of course, that was like the whole like uh, civil rights era and there was like there's been like lots of questioning also like what was like a like an african-american uh, painter doing as he was you know like getting deeper and deeper into abstraction the people are always telling you you should be this you should be that you know what i mean in those days and times uh, in new york if you were a mixed couple uh downtown uh like the black nationalists uh and the Panthers, you know, you couldn't be, do that. It was, it was like, it was like illegal for them. I, even when I was in Kansas City, I would be painting, I knew, I knew the Panthers. And when they came by, I'd tell people, I'd be in my basement painting, I'd tell them, tell them I'm not here, you know what I mean? 
because you, I really couldn't defend myself in terms of, you know, because you, you had to defend yourself in terms of what does this do, what does this have to do with the race? You know, what, what does this do for the race? And I had no idea, but I knew I wanted to paint, you know, and I felt it was important. So uh, it was difficult times. Those were really difficult times. And, um, you know, people really were policing you, you know what I mean? I, I, I said, you know, it was like the black police, you know, they, 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 can, they would really police you. So, yeah, those were hard times. I mean, I, I wasn't, I would never ever want to do what I was supposed to do. You know what I mean? And I had Which is a vision. political act in itself, I would say. Yeah, no, I had no, a vision and I followed it. You know what I mean? Whether, whether, you know, I made money or not made money or whatever, I just followed, followed it. I, I just had a calling and I followed it. You know, so I have a calling. So yeah, those were hard days. You know, but I, I got through it and there were fun days too. You know what I mean? It, you know, a lot of partying. So there were fun days too. But, you know, politically, you know, I mean, you have to realize there was a time when you had young students who went to Columbia turning to the weathermen, you know, who b bombed buildings, you know what I mean? And can you imagine someone who goes to Columbia or Yale right now, you know, bombing buildings? I mean, you know, no. They're more involved in making money and that. So those are difficult days. So those were like the late 60s, uh, 70s, and then you moved to Europe and you went to Rome. You know, in, in New York I was doing lots of different things. I wasn't getting much play. You know, I, no Afro-American artist, I mean, whether it was, you know, Jack Whitten or Ed Clark, uh, they didn't get, I mean, Ed never saw a success, you know what I mean? Uh, we weren't getting any play. We did shows here and there, but no one really, we didn't make any money or do anything. And um, by the 90s, I got really fed up with it, you know, and I, I was teaching at this Temple University and at a school in Rome. So my partner and I, Marina Adams, we just decided to get out of town. So we packed our bags and left, you know. So we went to Rome uh, in 94, I think, and uh, so we stayed five years, you know, in Rome, which was a great experience. You know, it was a great experience being out of town. I should have left a long time ago. It was a great experience. I got a lot of work done. I saw a lot of things. I traveled all around Europe. You know, we had a baby. Uh, we just had a great life, and it was really uh, a good experience. But that, but the big thing about that was, it was when we left because we had been in New York for a long time. Uh, we had traveled across the country a lot. Uh, we had traveled to Mexico. And so we, were, we brought a lot of stuff with us to Europe. And so that was a big thing. It's a, the big thing is when you do what, you know? And so that was, we made good decisions in terms of when we do what. So we've been talking a little bit for the last hours and you were doing like this other interview and you've mentioned already like twice or three times how important everything that you bring to the studio is, which rings a bell with what you just said, you know, like what you brought to, uh, to Rome. Right. And, and that's pretty much what informs, you know, like, again, like this kind of uh, work that is, you know, like abstract in the surface, I would dare to say. But then, of course, everything seems to happen within the grid and within each color. I was searching for a simple format to uh, get involved with color. You know, I mean, I realized I was, I was always a colorist. Uh, I knew it, when even I was in school, I could make things better with color. You know, if I did a figure a painting, whatever, it would get better if I, I could, I would always do good color. Um, but, you know, I, I didn't want to paint, I wasn't a storyteller. I knew I wasn't a storyteller. I, I knew I didn't want to do portraits. I wasn't a landscape painter. What, what kind of painter was I? So abstraction was really, uh, I didn't start painting abstract until maybe, uh, my figurative painting sort of died on me. I didn't really like uh, the stories I, it, people were re referring to with the paintings. And so I had to reinvent myself. But, uh, and I came to New York when Barnett Newman was really big, and Barnett Newman was, was really the star of the town. But the problem with that work, there was nothing to steal. I couldn't steal anything. I mean, what can you steal? There's a line down the middle and a red. What could I steal? <laughs> uh, so I was trying to figure out really what I was going to paint, you know what I mean? Um, I went to a summer program, I met Philip Gustin, he, and that summer I just drew a lot. I did a lot of drawings. And uh, he liked me as an artist, um, and so through him I got to go to New York, he got me a scholarship at the New York Studio School, which I didn't go to, because I thought I'm in New York, I don't need to go to school. Uh, but I, I just started drawing a lot, doing lots of drawings. 
And then a big thing was I saw, I got involved with um, uh, Van Gogh's drawings, because I thought Van Gogh's drawings interested me because they were black and white, but they felt very colorful. So that led to something. I, I just started working in black and white and trying to figure out a structure. And little by little, um, I wanted something really simple and basic, and I came, when I, after, and being in, in Rome, uh, the architecture really was it, you know. Uh, the buildings in Rome, the light in Rome, the color in Rome. So that was a, that was a big thing. And then I had this idea, uh, little by little, I thought, oh, I'll just stack the color. And I wanted something that was so simple. I mean, I, you know, I, was a, I loved Cezanne, and I wanted something very simple, something basic, you know what I mean? And so someone says, what, what are the paintings? People say grids. I never think about a grid at all. Uh, but uh, you say it's grid, squares of color, it doesn't explain anything, and it's not, it seems, doesn't seem very magical. It, doesn't, it seems kind of stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to uh, take something very stupid, you know, and make it really um, magical. So it, it was a good format for me, and it worked. I never know what the color is going to be. I never know what color the paintings are going to be. I, never, I don't make any plans. I know it's, you know, the structure of it, so it gives me total freedom with the color and, uh, and the surface and, and, and painting. And as long as they're um, individuals, like you're all individuals, uh, I, although you're all the same, but total individuals, then it's fine. If it was a red one, a green one, a blue one, then I wouldn't do it. You know? and that as far as I understand, that's also related to music, I guess, and the influence of jazz, improvisation. Well, and the music, the music thing uh, is something that comes out of my culture. You know, uh, I grew up, you know, in a family in, in Philadelphia, a black community, and, and music was always there. We went, we went, you know, we would go to school and come home and work on our dance step more than our homework. And we would, uh, music was everything, partying, music. Uh, the radio, in those days, lots of radio. So you would go to bed with the radio on, you wake up with the radio on. So the music was always there. So music was a big part of my life. Uh, I got involved in uh, 17, 18, uh, the jazz clubs of New York. I could go there, because in 18 in New York, you could drink. You couldn't do that in Philadelphia. So I'd go there to the jazz club, and I identified, you know, I was looking for myself. You know, as a young person, you're looking for yourself. Who am I? Who are my mentors? Who do I like? Who do I want to be like? And so people like Florence Monk, you know, and uh, Nina Simone, and Billy Holiday, those people just really were my heroes. And were you actually hanging out with them, or just no, like listening no. to them, I, or? One time, I heard Charlie Mingus at the, at the Village Gate. I was very thrilled. Uh, no, I didn't know them, but I just loved the music, you know what I mean? So, so the music was always there. So the idea of like uh, the rhythm, um, you know, staying in rhythm, uh, that's something I really use. Because in the studio, when you're painting, you've got to use everything. You, gotta, you can't just have, say, you have to decide in your studio what's going to come in the studio. And so music's a big part of my life, always was, and so I, that was a big key for me. So how, again, back to the recipe, how do you get all these different things, uh, use them all and get them in your studio? So I, I just use the, the music is really key. It's a big thing. So, because nothing stays still in the paintings, they all, you know, I mean, the paintings, you can look anywhere, uh, and the whole idea of them being, every, every color is equal, uh, no, no color gets in the way of another color, uh, and they're really meant to really live with, you know. So if you live with them, you know, you, um, you see them differently every day. That's the idea. And what about the different shades? Like, do you mix them a lot? Yeah, whatever they need. I don't, I don't really, like I said, I don't plan, so, it's, it's whatever they need. So it's really improvisation? Yeah, the only thing that's planned is the structure. Okay. A after that, everything's wide open. And there's no plans after that. I don't, I don't know. I don't plan even where those lines are in between. I never know exactly where they are. Uh, I don't worry about that. If, they f if it feels right, I leave it. You know? If it doesn't feel right, I get rid of it. You know? If it feels good, then I keep it. So it's all about that. And what about drawing? Drawing's a key. I mean, I think, you know, I mean, I'm a colorist. Not everyone's a colorist. You don't need that much color. I mean, like Jasper Johns, really, he likes gray. You don't need that much color uh, to be a great painter. Um, 
drawing's a key, you know. And so I drew, I draw and draw and draw. I have tons and tons of drawings. The drawings can be similar structures or not so structures. If, it, the drawing depends on the paper and the medium. What I do with drawing is I get the paper, and I think, well, this paper would be really good with a pencil. This paper would be better good with colored pencil. This paper would be better good with watercolor. Uh, this paper would be better good with uh, gouache. And so I do it like that. And then that leads to how I do it, you know. Um, with drawing, I can be a lot more, I can be many things in drawing. I can be more things in drawing than I can in painting. You know, drawing is really the key. And so if anyone here wants to be an art or work, I think drawing is the key. You know, and so I just draw, draw, draw. You know, I have a lots of drawings. I have drawers and drawers of drawings. And you mentioned before that you're not like a storyteller, but I feel that sometimes within your titles, uh, there is like some of that. that yeah, you're right. Yeah, exactly. There's like that beautiful one saying that you grew up uh, and the police was oh, right, kind of the police? chasing you. Did you do that for the Making Time show? Oh, yeah, uh, always running. For That's the very place. narrative. Sometimes. That comes out of that Biggie Small song, Running, you know. Um, we, yeah, the titles are, the titles really are like my life, you know, and you could probably put my life together with the titles. Well. You know, so uh, the titles are really key. I love titling the paintings. I mean, some now it's not so easy anymore. As I get older, I've seen so many titles, I think, what, the, what can I get, another title? <laughs> um, but I love titling the work. Yeah, the titles are key, yeah. They're, they're a big thing in terms of who I am, where I come from, what I'm thinking about, what I'm reading. I read a lot, you know. I used to always look at a lot of paintings, but now I read a lot. Readings now keeps me nice and sharp. So I'm always reading a lot of books. Um, so the titles are real key to who I am, where I come from, uh, what I'm thinking about, who I am in the world, yeah. That's really key. And you were mentioning earlier on to, uh, today when you were doing the other interview that you now tend not to look that much back. But now, because we're doing shows, uh, with older work and things are coming to an auction. I'm seeing older work, like a painting coming to an auction now that's from 1986. Um, and I see that painting and I, can, I think about it. You know, usually I'm just mo moving right ahead. I'm just like moving, 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 you know. And now that I'm older, you know, my history is bigger. Um, my past is bigger than my future. Um, I have this big past. And it keeps coming up. So now, I mean, so all of a sudden, I'm confronted with, you know, my old paintings. And so I look at those paintings. Maybe they have more gesture, more color. I mean, some paintings I saw that have so much energy, I think, oh, I must have been 20 years old when I made that painting, or, or 30 or something like that. Um, so why did I stop doing that? Why am I doing this now? And so I, I can sort of look back and think about, do I want to go vi revisit that? Do I want to give it up? What do I want to do with that? So that's something that's coming up now. So it's, it's interesting because all of a sudden, I'm looking at my past, you know, I have a past. And do you have a clue of what's coming up next or how do you want to process um, all that? Or? No, I'm not too sure. That's why I use drawing a lot like that. Drawing I use to experiment to think about where I might go. I don't, I don't want to be lost to, and you know, have to commit suicide, you know? So <laughs> I have to think about where things might lead me. So I, I want trap doors. You know, I want a way out. You know what I mean? Like here is a back, is a back door, right? <laughs> I want a way out. So I want to have things where I can like, you know, think, you know, if I wake up one day and think, oh shit, I don't want to make this anymore. I want to have uh, a way of um, going someplace else. And that's why drawing is a key. If you look at artists like Gustin, look at artists like Bryce Martin, you know, drawing saved them, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Uh, and so I, 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 that's why I say drawing is the key. So I want to have a way out if I decide that this is, this is ridiculous for me right now, uh, or if it dies on me. You know, if it dies on me, I have lots of ways out, you know, possibilities of where the paint could go. And, you know, as I get older, I mean, even these big paintings now, as I get older, I don't like, you know, these big paintings, these big canvases, I used to be able to pick these things up and move them around, you know? Not anymore. <laughs> so, um, so I started making the, even the 40 by 40 paintings and the smaller paintings, because I thought, well, I'll, can I make a great painting small? You know what I mean? So things like that. So I'm always thinking about where things will go, what I might do, things like that. So 
the studio is really a place like that where I can, I can try to really um, see lots of possibilities. So what about format then? Like what's, what would be like the reason behind make, like painting like one of these you know, like large scale paintings? as opposed to the smaller ones that are up there? Well, you know, the, like the ones up there, even the, the, the rectangle ones, I used to paint re rectangular uh, when I was in Italy. There were more rectangles. And uh, I came to the square because the square was so difficult for me to get a good rhythm in. I like the, re I like the resistance of the square. And the square is a really old, old format. It's ancient, and it's square. So I wanted to do, have something really that I, it, was, it gave me good resistance. Because it's like, how can I get that rhythm in that square? So I like that idea. When I think the rectangle, they're much more like landscape. These are very frontal. I couldn't get that at that time in my life. Uh, so the square was a real challenge for me. And now I, I have to look, going back, again, going back and look at the older work, uh, I said, oh, maybe I'll go back to the rectangle again and see what that's about, uh, if, I can, if I can really do that. Since I know, since I know how to do the, keep it very frontal, I'll, I'll go back to the rectangle. Um, so I, if I change size and change scale, then everything changes. So that's something I use, you know, uh, and uh, probably use in the future too. So those um, small rectangles up there, the, the monk, monk paintings, um, they're something that I'm thinking about, you know, in terms of maybe that could lead to something. And maybe, it, maybe it won't, I don't know. Something like that. You know. Great. Should we open this to the public and just like no. <laughs> move on, no? <laughs> no, thank you. Go ahead. Questions? I did so well, there's no questions. <laughs>